We're sitting here in the exhibition Constantine Grichich, Decisive Design, um, surrounded by work by Constantine Grichich. Um, this exhibition has two parts, and when we first started talking about the exhibition, we always thought about doing something that was more studio-like, uh, something that was much more interactive, and I wondered if you could talk about the design of the exhibition. Yes, it, it's fr from my experience as a, as a vis visitor of museums, and also from experience designing shows, I feel um, exhibitions have to have to engage people in a way that is somehow entertaining and um, joyful, but also, of course, educational to some extent, and uh, engaging with design means actually, you know, that you can touch things and you can try things out, which is in a way a contradiction to what the museum is, which displays things, presents things, and of course has to conserve things. And that's why from very early on I, I thought we have to create two levels of the exhibition. How do, how do you sit on a chair? How, what does it feel like? Um, does it look better than it is comfortable? Um, are these things heavy or not? talk to us a little bit about the 360 degrees chair which is a, a, a new work from this year which I think for some can be quite unnerving and why I thought think it's very important that they get to test it for yourself because you look very comfortable on it. Yes I, I look comfortable on it because I've, I've known it for for long enough I, I use one in my studio it's not about sitting down mm. and saying yeah it's all right but it's actually ideally about having it around you for mm -hmm a few hours, even days, weeks, and, and see whether it's, it's pleasant. It's, it's because it's, it's about sitting down. And you, you draw not only from the history of design, but also of um, our industrial landscape, our um, artistic, our creative landscape. For example, one of the um, um, most well-known of your pieces is the May Day Light um, that's here. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the, the starting point for that? I design a lamp that is free of uh, a fixed typology, so it's not the pendant lamp, it's not the floor lamp, it's not the desk lamp, the task lamp. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lamp. Um, but it's sort of kind of all of those in one. All of those in one, and mm -hmm. it's, it's maybe much more of a tool, and it has no place, but it, it, anywhere it, is, it has a place. The piece, the London, which is um, as mm -hmm. part of this installation. For me, this is a particularly interesting piece because it's, it's a communal piece, it's for, it's for many people. In public spaces, the, we, the, the strongest uh, reference is, well, the nature, first of all, and then our man-made environment, the architecture, roads, and to build furniture that can somehow compete in that environment, I find very challenging. And of course, it's, it's a beautiful idea of creating this kind of smaller scale architecture or call it furniture mm -hmm. for such spaces and, and what would that look like? It, for me it's not just taking a chair outside and then it's an out outdoor chair. And one piece in particular, um, the Mito chair, the first cantilever chair um, mass produced in all plastic um, since the Panton chair um, in the 1960s. Um, the, by Werner Pan, uh, Panton, and I wondered um, if you could talk a little bit more about obviously how you were inspired by that original design. Furniture, in a way, hasn't made huge leaps. A chair is more or less a chair ever since the Egyptians built chairs with four legs and a seat in the back. And but sometimes, though, it happens that either it's a social change or um, a, a change in industry. Uh, that means new materials or new technologies can kind of uh, can open new doors or, or trigger something that you haven't been able to do before. Uh, the chemical company BASF, they came to me as a designer with a, a, a particular blend of, the, of plastic or a type of plastic and asked me to design something that would promote the plastic. Let's test it out, let's go very um, to, to its, let's see what the limits are, and, and a chair is, is one of the, the most uh, challenging structures because it has to support the weight of a person, but not in a static way, but a person mm. moving around mm. and heavy people and kids climbing on it. And you do feel that it's going to sort of flex 
quite far back, but it is, it's so strong. And obviously the uh, clever title of uh, Mito, which in Italian, um, well, Itali in English, in Italian it means myth. Um, so uh, I think that's a very poignant um, part of your work is also the naming of your works. The name is, is always something very intuitive. It has to sound good and the best test for it is to, to kind of observe and find out if the other people, let's, let's say my assistants or the client, are they starting to call it by the same mm -hmm. name as mm -hmm. I do? You also um, designed um, cutlery and um, tableware, and particularly the pieces um, that I would like you to talk about are the pieces that you've created for Serafino Zani. Serving trays in particular, sheets of metal that have just been almost folded at the edge, seeming very simple, but obviously very carefully thought out and executed with precision. Um, so it almost takes on an element of origami. And I wondered how you could, if you could explain more about how these types of work come about. Uh, they're a little bit lighter in, in the um, kind of the issues we have to uh, respect as designers. For example, the structural issue of um, of a serving tray is, is nothing to compare with the structural mm. issue of a chair. So sometimes that feels feels very um, refreshing and nice to be working like that. And for me, the, the only way to have this control and precision to achieve the precision is by making these things. Um, modeling them. Architects don't have that possibility or car designers mm -hmm. a little bit but we can we can make a one-to-one -one model of anything and quite easily and and working with very very simple uh, materials folding paper. What are you hoping people will take away from the from the exhibition? Even the simplest little thing involves a team of people. Um, it starts somewhere from very primitive first ideas, models, refinement, technology, investment. Um, I, I, want, I want to show the, the whole complexity of what um, products are. Sometimes we go to exhibitions and we, um, we scan them too quickly. Go, we, we do the, the kind of the round and in and out again. And just by staying here testing a piece of furniture then I start looking at other things again. I stay, I, I, I kind of, um, I glance, um, and I, I, th I quite like this, um, this moment.